How did you discover your passion for music? Oh man, uh, <laughs> I think it was um, I think it was a few different things. Um, my mom was a piano teacher growing up, so there was always music in the house, um, and there was always a piano in the house. Um, and but I didn't. She didn't teach me or anything. She just she was a mom to me. I didn't want her to be a piano teacher, and she didn't want to be the teacher. She just wanted to be a mom. Uh, not only that, but uh, I remember in middle school or I was in elementary school and my brother joined the school band in his middle school and he started playing the drums and I thought that was the coolest shit ever I was like that I want to I want to be just like my older brother I want to do music just like him um so with that that kind of made it easy to explore different instruments so I started playing the drums was my first instrument and then because there was a piano in the house I started you know playing more on the keys and then I picked up the guitar and started going and all that happened within like a few years just teaching myself these instruments and teaching myself how to play these things and then i started writing songs as early as like 13 years old um and i just i've been writing songs ever since when you look at your career as a whole who or what's had the biggest influence either personally or professionally i think uh i think personally uh, you know, my family and friends, uh, my mom in particular, who's always been such a believer in me, in, uh, in sports, in, in life in general. Um, my, my mother and my grandfather both have, uh, have had a tremendous impact on my life personally. Um, and that's important uh, just because of how hard, how hard the music industry is and how, how, hard, how hard a dream like that is to attain and, and, and take hold of. So to have that belief system was very, very important for me. Um, influences in music, such a wide, wide variety. Like I would be listening to Nickelback of all bands. I'd be listening to Rage Against the Machine. I'd be listening to John Mayer, Michael Buble, like everything under the spectrum. And all of those, whether I realized it or not, hit me and inspired me in, in a way where uh, I still feel like some melodies that I create, I'm like, oh, that, that reminds me of, you know, this band back when I listened to, uh, listened to like 30 Seconds of Mars or something like that. Um, it's just funny how that, it still sticks with you in the subconscious. Yeah. And you've had tons of success throughout your career. When you look back, is there a particular moment that stands out to you? Oh my gosh. There's so many. Like there's an over... Overall, the whole journey has been incredible. But um, I guess a few highlights would be touring with Selena Gomez, which was an awesome experience. Um, playing on the Juno stage, uh, which is like the Grammys, but in Canada. Um, my gosh, like having my records go, you know, platinum. Just there's so much, there's so much to think about, really. But those, those are the ones that come to the top of mind. You've steadily been releasing music throughout the years. If you had to pick one song that best encompasses who you are as an artist, which would it be and why? The thing about artistry, in my opinion, is that it's always changing, right? So currently, if you were to listen to um, North Star or even the newest one, Be Like You, I think those two represent where I'm at right now. But if you were asking me this question, you know, three or four years ago, I would have been like, oh, probably Wicked or, you know, a song called Yesterday or something like that, right? But as, as a person and as an artist, you're always evolving and you're always trying to better yourself and, and learn as much as you can. Um, and that really affects the way you, I, I write at least and I create music. Speaking of Be Like You, can you tell us about the single and the inspiration behind it? You know, this was a, this was a story that um, I guess has been lingering in, in my subconscious for a while. Like, I've, I've been through the situation where you're trying to get over someone, but that person, while that person has already moved on, you know, doing whatever they're doing, you're just like, well, fuck, like my, my heart's still broken. Why can't your heart be broken? You know, I want to be just like that. I want to do what you're doing. Um, so that was like a, like a, a weird one where it was digging up 
an old, old relationship. And just when me and uh, my buddy Sam were writing it, it just kind of, we were just throwing ideas back and forth and we had something to relate to because he's also been through that situation. And it was just a relatable story. I feel like a lot of people um, can relate to that, that type of story. And you recently became a father. How has fatherhood impacted your artistry and craft? It's in, like in all aspects. It's touched on every single, every single part of my life. Um, even when we found out that we were expecting, my wife and I were expecting, um, which was last year, everything changed. Like my mind changed. A huge shift in, in, in the way I thought completely changed. It's like I wanted to, I wanted to be a better person for her. I wanted to make the world a better place for her. And it just, uh, yeah, it just made me want to be the best version of myself. Um, and that being said, it's like you, you want to work even harder. So you try, you try even, you try that much more for the, the right feels of melodies and, and productions and all that stuff. Um, but it's just, happier <laughs> which is great yeah. yeah yeah if your daughter wanted to follow in your footsteps what advice would you give her trust yourself uh easier said than done trust yourself um believe in yourself and don't be afraid to to ask questions yeah you recently shared a really powerful post on Instagram about self-identity. Can you tell us a little bit about your own personal journey and what made you decide to post that on social media? You know, I, it wasn't until recently, probably a, a few months before this, this whole movement, um, that I started thinking about my childhood and my experience with, with racism uh, as a half Asian. It was it was very interesting because I grew up in a, the majority of people were white um, in, a, in that kind of neighborhood and that kind of school system. So I didn't really have like people like me. I, I knew no other half Asians in the, my school district. I knew no other half Asians in uh, like my community at all. I had no half Asian friends. All my friends were white. And I was kind of lost, like stuck in limbo being like, I know I'm Chinese, but I know I'm white too. So it's like, I don't know really where I fit in really. And I wanted to explore more of that Chinese culture. But at that age, it was because of the stigmatism of uh, Asian racism. It was, it was very difficult and embarrassing to be like, yeah, like I am Asian and I'm proud of that. And you know, I think back retrospectively and I'm like, that's, that's shitty. That's really shitty. Right. You got to be proud of where you come from and proud of the culture. And I am now, and I'm, I'm super, you know, I dive into it every day and um, obviously am in love with it. So. And yeah, what does it meant to you to kind of pave the way for this next generation and this community that wants to see themselves represented in mainstream media? And does that add any pressure I mean, it honestly doesn't because I'm just, I'm focused on what I'm doing and the fact that what I'm doing is, is what I love doing. So I'm doing music and I get to release music. Just doing that gives the opera, gives people the opportunity, gives house Asians, people like me um, or Asians in general, just people to look up, someone to look up to, which I didn't have. So I, I want to be that person. And I don't think it, I, I don't feel any added pressure by doing that you know I'm, I'm comfortable talking about it and like i said it comes what it comes down to is that i'm following my dream i'm doing what i love and i'm trying to inspire positivity peace and love so just me being me in, in a sense there's no added pressure and speaking of following your dreams you're getting ready to, to release a third album um, how will this next body of work differentiate itself from your previous releases like I mentioned before, man, it's all about growth, right? It's all about the experiences you have between album cycles and, um, you know, the, the, the thing, the difference between the third album versus the first and the second album is that I'm a better, I'm a more creative, better person today than I was, you know, three or four years ago when the last album came out. Cause you, you're growing and you're going through these different experiences and you're getting to know yourself more. And, um, yeah, every album has, has a, 
particular like something has happened to a life event if you will yeah yeah speaking of growth what's one thing you know now that you wish you knew when you embarked on this journey oh man <laughs> it's not as easy as it seems <laughs> yeah it's it's a lot of work um but i'm down for it you know because i love doing it um yeah so it's, it's not a problem um, we just like to end all of our interviews with a pop culture speed round. Is there uh, a band or artist that fans would be surprised to learn is on your playlist? Who is on my playlist that, that fans would be surprised to know? I'm trying to think of my playlist right now. I have like, um, I don't know if, if uh, people know this band. It's a band called Mayday Parade, but it's like, it's like what I used to listen to in middle school, but I still listen to them now. It's like a punk rock alternative indie band-ish. Um, so that might be interesting, but I listen to a lot of rap as well, um, especially when I'm working out. I couldn't name you a specific artist, though. <laughs> what about the first album you ever bought? First album I ever bought was Silverside by Nickelback. And I know that's probably going to be pretty, <laughs> there's going to be some controversy with that because you either hate them or you love them. <laughs> um, but in this instance, like, I don't, I have, you know, fuck it, I love them. They're, they're, they were great, you know, they did great things for me back in the day, so I'm a fan. Uh, what about the first concert you ever attended? First concert I ever attended was Sum 41. Mm, yeah, one. yeah, it was awesome. Uh, what about an album that changed your life and why? Album that changed my life. That changed my life. That's big. Um, I think I'd have to say Michael Bublé. I can't remember what album it is, though. It's the one with everything on it. The song, everything, not everything, you know. Um, it changed my life because that CD basically taught me how to sing. I put it on every chance I could and I would sing to it over and over and over and over and over again and my family was sick of me I'm sure uh, what about uh, a venue that's on your bucket list to perform at um Wembley in London mm -hmm. yeah so yeah uh, and then final question for you when you're on the road what's a must-have Alcohol. <laughs> whiskey. Whiskey is a must, you know? Yeah. Uh, 